Blessings, beautiful souls. I want to start by saying I will be having a giveaway once I reach 3,000 subscribers. To be aware of the giveaway announcement, stay connected by subscribing and clicking on the bell icon next to the subscription button. Clicking on the bell icon, you will receive notifications every time I upload a video. And therefore, you will know when the giveaway video has uploaded. Stay connected, beautiful souls. I also want to say there are other video segments on ready-made molds and my handmade molds, including the different kinds of clay I use, being explained in details and tips on how to use them. Today, I will only be showing you how to use polymer clay in the molds because it's less complicated and beginners can use it also. So be sure to watch part one and part two before you watch this video so that you can more understand um, the clay and the molds. In the first video I showed how I used the polymer clays which is Fimo and Sculpey and how I mix them together. So for the purpose of this video I've already um, blended both clays together. And I'm going to show you how this is very intricate and even though it's intricate you can still come up with these, these results. So this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to use this roller to help me out and this knife. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some cornstarch on the mold. I'm going to be using this cornstarch. You can use any cornstarch as long as it's cornstarch. This is what I currently have. So I'm going to apply some and just dust it in there If you have too much, flip it over and just tap it off. That'll work too. Okay, in the if you checked out my first video, which I su suggest you do, I showed how I um, added Sculpey into the Fimo and and molded it and kneaded it together. So this is real nice and it's not too soft and it's not too hard either. And just ball it up. This is going to be a little challenging for me because the camera's in front of me and when I do this um, I'm very close to it so I have more control. So let's see how this works out. So I ball it into a ball and I'm going to put it in the center and I'm going to spread it on either side, on both sides. And it's okay if it pops up a little bit. If you find that the clay is sticking to your fingers, just add some cornstarch to your fingers to prevent the clay from sticking to you. So you're going to spread it all the way up where the design is. Once you got it all the way to the end of this one, let's work on the other one. You could also use this, you put a little bit of cornstarch here and you can use this also.
I think I was going to use this, but because the camera is in front of me, um, I don't think I'm going to have very much control and I don't want to cut into the mold. So I'm going to use the spatula instead to be on the safe side. So you know what? I was going to um, slice here, but I'm going to start from here. So you're just going to cut off what's on the top or slice off what's on the top. As much as you can and you see that the clay is inside and the intricate parts are peeking up the parts that are cut out like this like those space those holes you see there the spaces you want to make sure these parts are sticking up well actually where they are revealed Once you get the hang of this, it'll become easier with time. Oh, wait a minute, what am I doing? I need clay in there. Okay, no problem. I need that. The clay lifts a little bit, which it's going to do that because of the cornstarch. Just push it back down. You want to make sure that before you lift this up, that this is filled great. Like there's a little space right here. You can see that. I'm going to fill it a little bit with clay. You got to have patience with this, with the intricate molds. But it's worth it in the end. I'm adding clay where I believe it's needed. Now you're gonna put this in the freezer for like anywhere from three to five minutes. And then we're gonna pull it out. Okay, um, off camera I went and added a little bit more clay because I saw a little bit more spaces and then I put it in the freezer. So this is very cold right now um, and this is how we're gonna remove it. We're going to flip it and very, very gently, we're going to roll. Okay, this piece broke, but I'm going to show you how to mend this back together before you bake it. Just be patient. Okay, I need to move this over. I didn't realize uh, this was short. You know what? Okay, so this worked out well. 
Nothing broke except for this piece here. And I suggest when you're unmolding it, put it in the bake, unmold it in the baking tray. You're going to bake it in so that way you don't have to move it. It'll stay in place. And if pieces break off of it, if a piece or two breaks off of it, or you're unmolding it in the tray, that's fine. You leave it in the tray in the position that it is. And this is where this, where the TLS comes in. This I showed in the first video, in part one. So make sure you view that video so you can see what this is for. This is like, this is clay in a thick liquid form. So it's a clay glue. So you take some of that and you add it to the, oopsie, you add it to the joint and you, oopsie, this is so small. And then you just reattach it. And when you bake it, it'll bond like nothing happened. Okay, this is the, uh, the other part. So when I did this one, it broke um, in these two parts. It broke right here. And I just mended it back with the TLS with this before I baked it. And I already had it in the tray, so I didn't have to move it. And it worked out just fine. So for these, you're going to do the same thing that I showed you when you add your clay in these parts. You um, put it, put the clay in the middle and just mold it out. And then just um, slice off the remaining clay and making sure that you don't have spaces. Wherever you have spaces, just fill in a little bit of clay at, at a time. And if it overflows, just slice off that piece. I baked it. And the broken pieces are not broken anymore. It turned out beautifully. That is the benefit of these ready-made molds. They're very flexible and it's easy for the clay to pop out. That's why you could also use it on intricate. Um, that's why you can use the clays on, on intricate uh, molds like this. You cannot use the clay on these kinds of molds if the mold is very very thin you cannot that's the only time you cannot use the clay you can also I made these wings and look how thin that is but it's not too thin and it's very pliable I wouldn't pull it too hard because it will break but it's very pliable so if it falls it won't crack and it won't chip. With this mold, obviously this is a big um, mold and it's a little bit deeper except for this raised part. But even then, it works really great. And with this, I added my clay again. I put it in the center and I molded it out. I let it overlap. And then to help it a little bit more, I pressed in this to so give it an even um, impression and I also turned it over and did it on the back side as well. You don't have to press it too hard but put enough pressure and um, I'll be using this on a dollhouse that I'm putting together. That's why I bought this mold for that. These molds are handmade. Um, I have a video on that too. These are not as pliable or flexible as these are, but they still do a great job in creating molds, especially when you have an object and you want to make more of it or you want to have more of it and you don't want to spend the money, you can make a mold for it. These frames I had bought ooh, almost two years ago on eBay from a China seller and these were the frames. These are, these are made out of resin. And I didn't want to repurchase them, so I decided I'm going to make a mold out of these. I've been making molds for, for quite a bit of years. So it was nothing for me to make a mold so that I don't have to keep buying these. I made a mold for all of these. And before I knew that they were making molds for frames, because a lot of these frames, they have in these kinds of molds. 
but I didn't know that. So I went ahead and made my own. And this is how they came out. And I'm going to demonstrate how to put the clay in this one because since this one is a little bit harder for the mold to come out, um, you got to apply a different method. So again, you're going to take your clay. Before you take your clay, you will add your cornstarch. That's a little too much, but that's okay. We're going to dust off the rest. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll my clay into a snake. And I'm going to apply it right where right where this line is. I'm not going to go all the way up. And if I go all the way up, I'll just take some off. The frames are fairly fast to do to put the molds in here. They're pretty quick. Just making sure that it's right on that line. And even if you go over and you bake it, you could always shave it off. If you happen to hear music, that's my neighbor across the street. Across the street, their music is extremely, extremely loud. They don't exercise common courtesy in this area. I'm going to put this in the freezer as well. This, I'm going to leave this in there more than three minutes, probably five to seven minutes. It's a super duper cold. Okay, now to take this out of the handmade mold, I bang it. And then I gently um, separate the sides. I push it up a bit. You can push it back. Okay. And it held its shape. Look how beautiful that is. It's not even baked yet. It's not cured yet. So that's how you remove your clays out of your silicone molds. Well, that, that's how I do it anyway. I wanted to share with you the other molds I have, the flexible molds that have the frames that I didn't know they had. And look how pretty that one is. This is from this mold here. This side of the mold is this one, but I already had made a mold because remember, I had bought the resin piece, so I made the mold. And I really wanted this side, even though this side is the same mold that I made, but I absolutely wanted this side. That is so pretty. This is another mold I really wanted. Look how pretty these turned out. This clay, I'm telling you, it leaves a great impression on these molds. If you was to um, use this with the plaster of Paris, it's going to crack. The plaster of Paris is going to crack, it's going to chip, it's going to break if it falls. If this falls, it will not break. Here's a mask mold. These would be great to embellish. I am really excited to get these embellished. I have a dresser here.
This would be great on the mini albums too, right? With a nice um, bedroom theme. That would be so pretty. I think I want to make one of those. Look at this cutie pie here. And these are a thin but not too thin. And they still turned out great. They're flexible too. Look at the teeny tiny socks. And how it picked up the details on that. Well, these are the booties actually. These are the socks. Look at the details on that one. And the clothes. Well, you already saw this one. This here, this mold here, I used paper clay for this mold. And even the paper clay picked it up nicely. I have um, a video segment on the different clays, so which I've linked in the description box below, so ch check that one out too. Um, and then what I did with this, I made another mold. I filled this up with clay. Let's say this was filled with clay, with clay, right? It's filled with clay. Then I took out the whole piece, which would be this one. And then I cut and sculpted this part first. And then I sculpted, I added um, a heavy gauge wire in here. And then I sculpted around that wire and made the stand for the dress form. And then I made the mold for it. See how it fits perfect? Because this is the mold. This is the molded clay I made to use the mold, to make the mold. How great is that? And it stands up. I made it so it can stand up. So when I put it in a miniature house, it's great. And it also can be, it's also flat. So you can put it on your mini albums or your paper crafting items. This mold has two windows in it. And I want to show you how you can paint clay also. I painted it in white. This was a, like a green color. And I painted it in white. So it is paintable. And you can cut out the windows as well. So it also comes with shutters. I wanted this mold um, when I, you know, when I make dollhouses. houses. I didn't realize that the project that I'm working, currently working on, the dollhouse house that I'm putting together, these windows actually fit. I was really surprised and excited that it actually fit. What a great bonus. The same way I did the heart frame, it's the same way you do here. You just make a snake, you add your cornstarch to this and you make a snake and then you just fill it in all around. You fill it in all around. It's really simple, just like this. And you put, put it in the freezer. And since it's more flexible, it comes out even easier. What you do is, let me just, um, I'm just going to do anything here just for the sake of the video. Okay. What's great about this one is that because it's so flexible, after you take it out the freezer, you, you gently pull it from this side first, and then you pull it from this side second. And you see how it lost its shape? That's the reason why we put it in the freezer so it doesn't lose its shape. It actually comes out and it comes out exactly the way this is in the shape that this is. Um, this clay can be shaved and it can be cut also. So I have this other window, um, I was gonna say die. <laughs> this window mold and I left these two windows so you can see how easily this clay can cut. 
which um, I demonstrated that on the clay video. I'll show you this right now. Look how easy that cut out. And you can also shave it if you didn't get a great cut. If you have some of the win uh, some of the back window still there, just cut it off. Just shave it off. Look at that, real easy. And it's not that thick, and it still worked nicely. I made a whole bunch of these windows. Um, not these. Um, these for the dollhouse. This last mold I want to show you, it's not a really good mold because of the legs. Um, it's a two-part mold and you can make it dimensional. It's supposed to be like a carousel horse. However, the legs are awful. So what I had to do is I mold, I put the clay in here and I re-sculptured the legs myself. And I will be making a mold out of these. What's great about this is that I can use them flat on a project or I could actually make it dimensional. You can put a skewer in there or a dowel. That concludes this segment today. Share, be fair, love one another, and be filled with love. Peace.